guys, I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. We're on week two of the 2021 Mystery Bats and Booze project. If you joined us last week, we made four bat blocks. This week, we're gonna be working on a pumpkin block. We're gonna cut all the fabric to make four, and I'm gonna show you how to piece one of the blocks. This week, we're gonna use the same ruler as last week, which is our six and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler by Creative Grids. We're gonna add this CGR2, which is a two and a half inch square ruler. And we're gonna use the same thread, which is RFL color 2600. In addition to the quilting free pattern, we have a cross stitch free pattern. So check that out at fatquartershop.com. This is part one and this is part two. So let's move to our first step, which is cutting all of our pieces. We're starting with the white fabric. I have a design board with all of my alphabeties. So as I cut, I place them on there so that when I piece, I can go faster. And we're starting with the background fabric. To start, I'm gonna cut a three and a half inch strip first. And I'm only using one layer this time. We're gonna cut two three and a half inch squares. I'm gonna kinda just cut this side first and then rotate that. Just making sure that all of your salvage is cut off and you can see your salvage because it's where the dots are. And we will put that on our design board with A. And we're gonna move to B. We need eight, two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. So I'm gonna take this strip, trim it down to two and a half, and it looks like it moved a little bit, so I'm actually going to straighten it up. And I'm not sure that I'm gonna get all of my pieces from this strip, but we're gonna just see what we get. So now I'm gonna cut two and a half, I can throw this out. Trim this edge. And we're gonna cut eight four and a half inch rectangles from the two and a half inch strip. So that's two. four, six. So that is six. We don't have enough to cut from here, but what we're gonna do is put these on our design board. And you've got this little piece left. And we're gonna cut a lot of one and three quarter inch and one and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut some one and a three quarter inch squares from this and we'll come back to them just so that this little piece is not wasted. So we're gonna have from that scrap, we're gonna have two one and three quarter inch squares and two one and a half inch squares. And we'll just set these aside. That's just a way if you want to conserve fabric. Now we need one more two and a half inch by four and a half inch rectangle. So I will start with a two and a half inch strip. Cut a four and a half inch rectangle. And what I do here is just cut enough where you know you're gonna get the four and a half without the salvage. And so all of our B's are done now. So we've got A and B. We're gonna move to C, which is eight one and three quarter inch squares. So we'll move this strip and make it one and three quarters. And it looks pretty straight. It doesn't look like I need to square it up. So I'm gonna just trim this and just start cutting one and three quarter inch squares. So, 
we already have two right here. So this is four, six, and eight. So those are our C's. Now D, we need 32 more of those. So we'll just start cutting from the rest of this. So two, four, and I do count out loud at home. So if your husband ever asks why you are counting out loud at home, just tell him I said, that's what I do. So that is eight, 10, 12. So 32 minus 12 is 20, so I need 20 more. So I'm gonna get that from one strip. So I'm just gonna go over here and do another one and three quarters. And we're gonna cut 20 more of these. Now on this, I'm gonna go ahead and put these right sides together to save time. If you cut this side off, see how it's fat? It's gonna make it much easier than if you cut this side off. So just cut this side off. Rotate and 20, so you need five of these. So one, two, three, four, five. Now you could turn this into a one and a half inch square if you want. So I'm gonna do that real quick because we're gonna do that next. We'll cut one and a half and then we'll see if there's enough, if there's salvage on the back, there might be salvage. But I know I can get at least two of those from this. So I'm gonna look and it did not hit the salvage, so I've actually got four one and a half to go with my other two that I've already cut. So that's just conserving fabric. You don't actually have to do that. Now these are my D's. E and F, you need 12 one and a half by 10 and a half inch rectangles and 16 one and a half inch squares. So what I'm actually gonna do is cut three strips one and a half inches, and we're gonna go from there. I will trim this up, just so I have a nice straight edge. And one and a half times three is four and a half. So I'm gonna cut a four and a half inch strip right here. I'm gonna move this out of the way. So this is where I might confuse you. We're gonna take this, you can get three, one and a half this way. So we're gonna do that real quick. From the side, cut one strip, another strip. So that will give you three, one and a half inch by width of fabric strips. Put them back together. Trim off the salvage over here. And we need 12 10 and a half inch rectangles. So I'm gonna cut 10 and a half here. That's gonna give us six. And if you move this, your other fabric won't move. And we're gonna see if we get 10 and a half. We probably won't. So we can't get any more 10 and a half. So I'm gonna use these to do one and a half, which is our next set. So we previously had cut six one and a half inch squares. So we only need 10 more for fabric F. So right here, we'll see how many we get from this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So now we have enough for fabric F, which is right here. Now these are just extra, so I'm gonna actually keep these. 
and we can use them maybe in a future block and just save these strips and put them aside. And here we have six fabric E rectangles. We need six more. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut three one and a half inch strips, subcut that, get rectangles, and I'm gonna save the leftover fabric for future blocks. So I'm actually gonna put this aside and before I subcut these down into strips, I'm going to cut 10 and a half inches across. And save this for next week. And you don't have to cut exactly like I am. I'm just showing you kind of what I do, but you know, there should be enough fabric um, however you cut. We do figure in five inches extra. So our background is now cut and we're gonna move to our black and white dot. So here's our fabric that we used last week. We're gonna start with two three and a half inch squares that we can get from this little section. And then we're gonna cut a one and a half inch strip to get our fabric H squares. So first, just cut this off. Three and a half inches. And we can set this aside and you've got a lot left over for next week. I'm gonna first subcut these since they're right here. We need eight one and a half inch squares. So you can either cut four times at one and a half or you can cut at six inches, four and a half inches, three inches, and one and a half inches. And there are your squares. Save this strip in case we need it for something else. And if we don't end up using it, you can always put it in your scrap bucket. So this is gonna be your fabric H. So we'll just put it over here. For fabric G, we need to turn this into two, three and a half inch squares. And we will save this piece in case we need it for a future block. These are going to be our fabric G's. So we have our skull fabric. I have it doubled over. I'm gonna start with two three inch with the fabric strips, which I'm gonna get from here because I'm doing one on top of the other. So I'm gonna put this layer together, cut a straight strip, cut a three inch strip, From here, I'm gonna cut two one and three quarter inch strips. And from there, I only need one one and a half inch strip, so I'm gonna move this over here and cut one and a half. And we might need to cut more from that. We're just gonna have to see kind of how much we get. So I'll set this aside for now. I'm gonna rotate these up and out of the way and we're gonna start subcutting here. So we need eight three by five and a half inch rectangles. So I'm going to first trim this, subcut five and a half inch rectangles. So that's four. And that's eight. Those are gonna be my fabric eyes. So we'll put those right there. For fabric J, we need 16 one and three quarter by three. So this is three inches wide, so we're gonna start subcutting one and three quarters. And the reason on this one I don't cut larger and then subcut is I don't have one and three quarter inch math memorized. 
So this is just easier and I'm less likely to make a mistake. So we'll see how many we get from here. And when I'm cutting, I am lining up the ruler here and here. And after you cut, if you move the piece you just cut and not this piece, you'll get a better result. So we'll see how many of these we got. So this is 16 right here. So I'm going to put these on fabric J. And then for fabric K, we need 24 1 and 3 quarter inch squares. So from here, I'm going to cut this into a square so that we have one of these started. Now we need 20 more. And we're going to try to get that from this 1 and 3 quarter inch strip right here. We'll see how much we get. So we will need to cut five more times to get that, I believe. Okay, so I'm gonna cut five times, and that's gonna give me 20. One, two, three, four, five. So from here, these will be our fabric K's. And for fabric L, we need 16 one and a half by five and a half inch rectangles. So I'm gonna subcut this down to one and a half so that we can use all of this. So these are bigger pieces. So you're gonna get four here and probably none here. Ooh, I'm gonna get four more, good. So we have eight total here. We will need eight more. So that's our first one and then we're gonna get eight more. Hopefully from this, I'm actually thinking we're not gonna get eight more, but we'll see how many we get. So we'll see. Okay, one, two, three, four. Ooh, we're probably not gonna get it. Five, six, fail, not enough. So that's fine. We just need to cut two more. So what we'll do, in that instance, I'm just gonna cut a little piece off the bottom, off of here. I'll just cut a little piece right here so that I don't have to cut a whole strip. So I'll just cut a little tiny piece and then subcut that down. So one and a half. Trim the salvage off. Five and a half. These are going to be some cute little pumpkins that have really nice hourglass blocks, so it's going to be worth it. So that's my L, and we only have one more piece to cut. So here's our black bat fabric. We need eight one and a half inch squares, and last week we cut this little piece off, so you can cut from here or here. Really doesn't matter. I'll just start from here since we've already kind of cut on that side. I'm going to cut one one and a half inch by width of fabric strip, and we'll subcut that down. And we will see how many we get. So we need eight, so hopefully we can get eight from right here. And we did. So we will just set this aside, and here is everything that is cut. We are gonna cut one more thing though before we go on. When you look at your pattern, we need to cut our fabric A and fabric G squares on the diagonal twice. So I'm gonna do that real quick. These are easier to cut with a smaller ruler, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a large ruler. And you just wanna make sure that 
When you're cutting hourglass, you really want to make sure your ruler hits the tip. So that is going to make the fabric A squares turn into triangles. So we will put that alpha bitty right back on there, put it right back on our board. And then we're gonna do the same thing with our fabric G squares. So we'll cut those. And you will be working on the bias when you're working with these. So we'll just have to be a little bit more careful when we work with those pieces. So now everything is cut and ready to go and we can start assembling our block. We have everything cut. I'm gonna use this board to keep my fabrics on and then I'm gonna use this board to build my block. And this is enough to make four blocks, which is what you need for your quilt. And today I'm gonna demonstrate how to make one of the blocks. So the very first step we're going to do is make an hourglass block. And for the block, you only need one. So we're gonna do this right here. We're gonna take two fabric G and two fabric A triangles. And that is going to be your hourglass. I'll set this aside. I'm gonna place these right sides together and pin. And this is working with the bias, so I do recommend pinning on this one, and I also recommend pinning since it's very small, and bias will stretch more than non-bias. So I'll have these two pinned. We're gonna go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna use a 2.0 stitch length a quarter inch foot and stitch all the way down. And I'll remove my pin as I get close. And we will go press. I left my two pieces chain piece together. I'm gonna press these to one side first and then we're gonna press open. I like to press to one side before I press open. If I try to just press open, I will burn myself most of the time. So that is why I do that. And I just kind of finger press it. And the reason that we're pressing this hourglass block open is because it is going to intersect with a lot of seams below it. And we feel like because it's so small, it's gonna get a better result. So we have those together. We'll clip this seam in the center. Put these right sides together and pin. And what I like to do is pin on each end first. And then in the center, try to line those up right where the white and white touch and the black and black touch and pin right in the center. And we're gonna stitch a quarter inch seam. Now I will open to make sure my seams match before I go iron and they do so I don't have to redo anything. So let's go press this nice and flat. Now we're gonna set our seam, which means just put in your iron just on your seam. It's gonna lock in your stitches, press to one side. And if you feel like the iron is too hot, you can press the back with a quick press seam roller by Lori Holt so you don't burn your fingers get it nice and flat. And we have written this pattern where you trim down your hourglass block so that you get a really nice result. So let's do that. I'm gonna take a Creative Grids two and a half inch square ruler. The SKU is CGR2 and line it up where each of your corners hits where the white and black are on all four corners and the center 
you want in the center of this. So here you can see that right here, these are lining up right here. This right here is lining up, but this is not right here. So first what I'm gonna do is cut two sides. Rotate my mat. Put your fingers down, hold your ruler in place. Pop that corner right up there. You'll never know the difference. Now we're going to start building our block. This is the very top of our pumpkin. So I'm gonna put that at the top and you want your black and white at the top and bottom instead of sideways. This is gonna be kind of the top stem of your pumpkin. And you're gonna add fabric B rectangles right here. And you need to make one of these for each pumpkin block. So we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're going to pin this one right here. I'm gonna pin twice. And remember, these are all bias seams on this hourglass block, so it will move around more. We're gonna sew down this seam. We're gonna use the quick press seam roller to press it and then add the other side and then do a final press with our iron. going to press toward my white rectangle. So just do a quick press. It will be nice and flat once we iron on it. And this will just save you time from getting up and down ironing. And just sew the last rectangle on the top. Now set your seam, press towards your rectangle, and then where you previously used your seam roller, just put your iron right on that. And this is our top stem unit. For the next step, we need two fabric L rectangles, two fabric F squares, and two fabric H squares. On the wrong side of your squares, we're going to draw a line from corner to corner. And we're going to just move our design board and we're going to first work on this one and your squares are going to go this direction and this direction and I'm going to pin those in place so they don't move. And you would just want to make sure it's really on the edge. Then we're gonna to go to page two and do this one. And this one, you're gonna go up here and up here. And you only need one of each of these for each block. So you wanna make sure that you stitch directly on the line so you get a really nice 90 degree corner. If you stitch too far over, it's not gonna be wide enough, and if you stitch too far, it's gonna to be too fat on the edge. So just try to stay directly on that line, and we're gonna stitch all four of these seams. So I'm gonna change my foot.
You can also follow this washi tape that I have put down and I put it down to match the center line of where the needle is. And if you just follow it, Now we're going to trim a quarter inch away from our seam allowance. You can do that with scissors or you can do it with a ruler. Since we use the two and a half inch ruler, I'm just going to use that. I prefer to use a ruler. I think it goes faster and I'm less likely to cut into the seam too much. You can just throw away these little bits. You don't need these. And we're going to press and on this, you want to make sure that you press according to your pattern so that all of your seams that come right here will nest. So I'm going to set both seams. This one is for the left. On that we're going to press away from the rectangle on both. And you'll notice when I'm pressing I'm going nice and slow and not moving my iron too much. And that will keep your fabrics nice and unstretched. So that's the first one. The second one you're going to press towards the white on this side and on the inside we're going to press away from the black. And all of the arrows are on your pattern. It's a completely free pattern. And the reason you're going to do that is our very next step is we're going to sew these together. So you'll put these right sides together and when you do that, this will actually nest. So if you just put it here and just start moving your hand, it will nest. It will just stop. So it just nests right there. Put a pin and we're going to just sew right down this quarter inch seam. Now we're going to switch back to our quarter inch foot. Just sew a quarter inch seam. And when you get that from your sewing machine, it should have a nice point at the bottom. Now we'll set this seam, press to one side, and this block has a lot of little pieces, but just take your time and you're going to have a beautiful block. So I'm going to press to one side first and then I'm going to press this open. We're going to add this right here, making sure that this creates a circle. And what we need is we need these points right here to match, which can be tricky. So I'm going to give you a little trick. We're going to turn this over and we're going to draw quarter inch seams and this intersection right here. You're going to just draw a little quarter inch line, quarter inch line. Now you don't have to do this. This is just if you want to. Put this back. I'm going to put this on top, pin in the very corners. It really doesn't matter which side you put on the top and the bottom. But first thing is pin the left and the right and just a little bit in maybe pin twice on the left and twice on the right. And it should be nice and flat. And then we're going to pin these two intersections. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my pin right where that black and white touch at the intersection. Poke my pin through, go through the back where when my pin comes out, it comes out on the back where that quarter inch line is. So when we sew this, hopefully all four of those points match up. And if they don't, we can just sew it again. And I'll pin once in the center. And so we're just going to sew straight down this intersection. This is the 
moment of truth, we're going to see if it matches. And it does. Now here we're going to set our seams again. And I like to count to five. That's about how long I leave it. And this time we're going to press toward the orange. So I like to finger press it and then put my iron right on that intersection and go across. Leave my iron about five seconds and we'll move to the next step. And this is how the top looks. We're gonna start building the star that goes in the center and we need four flying geese. So we're gonna take four fabric J rectangles, set those aside, and we're gonna take eight fabric D squares and then put this back. We're gonna draw a line on the wrong side of these eight squares real quick. Now we'll go to our design board. We've got the top going and we're going to build these flying geese. And I'm going to go ahead and pin all of the squares on the corner. And we'll do four of these and come back and press and then we'll build the other side. And this fabric is really cute. It looks like it's pumpkins, but it's really skull head. So I think that's pretty cute. and we're just gonna sew directly on that line. We're gonna switch back to the open toe foot. I'm gonna clip these apart and trim a quarter inch away. You could also use scissors. and we're going to press. First, we will set our seams. Then we will press toward the white square. And when you're doing a lot of pieces at one time, you can stack them and that will help the bottom pieces get a little bit more pressing. And then we're going to do the other side of the flying geese. And then just cut these apart and trim a quarter inch away again and we'll press the same way towards the white and we're gonna have four flying geese and then we're gonna be able to build the star that goes in the very center of our pumpkin and it's gonna be a nice, cute pumpkin. Now we're gonna come back and start building our star. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start building the star on the inside and I'm going to do the four patch at the sewing machine with my seam roller to save time. So I'm going to go ahead and put the white of the flying geese in the center. We're going to add a fabric K squares here. Put these two squares which is part of a four patch. Add two fabric C squares. Out here we need four fabric K squares. And this is a fabric that just goes any which way, so I'm not paying attention to the way the skull heads go. And then out here we're gonna have fabric I rectangles. So I can actually assemble this entire thing at the sewing machine, press with my seam roller, 
and come back and we will be done. So I'm gonna show you that. And that's a way if you are busy and don't have a lot of time, a way you can save time at home and you can try it and see if you like it. The first thing I'm gonna do is assemble this little four patch. I'm gonna put these two fabrics right sides together and we're gonna sew down this seam. I am going to change my foot to go back to the quarter inch foot. Add my next piece, which will have the white on top. So from here, we can just press using the seam roller. I will press to one side, and having a little bed on your machine like this will help because it's gonna give you a nice solid surface to do this on. So you just press, go to the back, press open. I like to do that with my fingers first, and then this will press it nice and flat, especially since these pieces are small. This is gonna work just as good as an iron. So you can see they're nice and flat on the front. We're gonna put them right sides together, clip the seam, pin on the left and the right first. And then we're going to make sure these nest in the center where the orange and the orange touch and the white and the white touch, and then place a pin and sew over, starting in the very center. And we're gonna see if that lines up, and it does. And then we will just do this little section right here that we missed. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the seam roller. Get all my little threads off. Press this open. And from here, I would like to go ahead and build my star. So what I will do is put these right sides together. And we're gonna sew down this seam. So I'll pin as I go. So this very first one, add a pin. Now on this one, when we pin that together, first pin the left and the right like we always do, and in the center you will have a seam that meets. And you just want to make sure your two, you want to make sure your four patch center meets the center of your flying geese, and pin. And keep all of your fabric together that you had before. Don't don't cut your thread yet. Add your last piece. From here, you can put this back on your design board. Your intersection meets, luckily. And we're gonna add this piece and then we will iron. I'm gonna cut apart my pieces right here. Put the fabrics right sides together and sew down that seam. And the same thing here is you want your intersections to match up. I feel like 
pinning does take extra time, but I do have to rip out a lot less when I pin. If I don't pin, I end up using my seam ripper a little bit too much. Now I'm gonna leave everything here on the table so that I can just put my star back in and we're going to go press this and come back. So I'm gonna set my seams on both sides, nice and flat. Then I'm gonna press to my squares on each side. So I'll probably finger press first, do one side, do the other, and then it can Go nice and flat. The insides we're gonna press toward that four patch. So I'll do one side at a time. And for some reason that seam really lined up a lot easier than that first one did. So you can see these match. And then we're gonna press these towards this side. And now while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and pin both sides. I'm gonna pin this down and this down so that we can sew both sides when we get to the machine. So again, I start on the end. Since we press the way we did, these intersections will lock. So you could actually, if you were blindfolded, just go like this and you will know because you can feel it lock. You don't even have to look on both sides, just kind of nest right in there. And then the same thing we've been doing is we're gonna just make sure that the point of the flying geese hits the intersection in the four patch. Then we'll do the other side. Now right here, see this little piece that's sticking up? I'm gonna chop that off from behind. It's just sticking out a little bit too much. I chop that off. That just means I didn't trim enough probably. And then here, same thing. Line it up and put a pin and just sew down both seams. And since you've pinned it, it's gonna go real fast. points match. So from here, I am going to go ahead and press with the seam roller and add the sides just to save some time. So these you press toward the inside and it's going to give it a nice flat press right after this, but this will just save a little bit of time because when you go back over it, it'll get flat. So I'm just Pressing this down. And then it's gonna go right here. And we'll make it nice and flat with the iron in a little bit, but that's gonna save us time by adding the left and the right fabric eye rectangles. So I'll just put this right sides together. Do the same thing, pin left, right, center stitch and do the same thing on the other side. And then we'll be about halfway done with our pumpkin.
and our points match. I haven't chopped off any points yet. Add the other side, and then we're gonna give it a nice press. So now just set your seam on both sides. And again, I like to count to five when you do that. Just let it sit on there about five seconds each. Press toward your rectangles away from your star. Both sides. And you can see that seam roller gave you the same results as an iron. And it saved us, you know, a couple minutes. We're gonna put it on our design board and then we're gonna get ready to cut our next pieces. So we've built this. I'm actually gonna go ahead and pin this so that we can sew across this when we get a chance, just to save time at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this, and then we're gonna build the next pieces, which are the very bottom of our pumpkin. And you will see that I'm pinning on the left and the right, and you can see I just need to ease it in. So you just go boop, put it in the center, pin maybe once in the center, and just kind of ease it in. And when we're at the sewing machine, anytime we have a second, we can just sew across this seam. So I'll put this at the top. For the next part, we need two Fabric L rectangles. Two Fabric F squares and two fabric M squares. So these squares are different fabrics than the fabrics that we did up here at the top. So at the top, we were working with the black and white dot. At the bottom, we're working with the bat fabric. So that's honestly the only difference in what we're about to do. So draw a line on the wrong side of these squares. And I'm just gonna follow the directions really closely on my images. So that's why we always put really pretty images so they're easy to follow. And once you have them all on there, I like to pin I'm gonna pin all four down and we're gonna sew directly on all four seams just like we did up here. And keeping these separate steps is gonna help just because there's two different fabrics. If there were the same black fabric, we would have done all of them at the same time. I just didn't wanna accidentally have bats and dots in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna change my foot again to my open toe foot and stitch as closely as I can to my drawn lines. So I'm gonna trim off the quarter inch allowance. And these are too small to use again, so I would just throw those out. Or you can make a cute jar of leftover fabrics or something, but they're definitely not big enough to, to use later. And we're going to press these. I'm gonna place them on just like they are, because it helps me follow my pressing. I'm gonna press these two towards the square, this toward the square, and this away from the square, so that this seam and this seam go opposite directions. This will go towards the black, and this will go towards the orange, which is gonna give you that nice nest at the bottom. I'm 
I'm gonna lay down my pieces making sure it creates a little point right here. And you can see right here, I've got a little piece of fabric sticking up. I'm gonna chop that off. I'm gonna put these together, pin in place, When I go to the sewing machine, I'm gonna put my quarter inch foot back on and I'm gonna sew across this seam and this seam. Now on here to save time, I'm gonna use my seam roller to press this open. So I'm gonna to press to one side first. It's just a little tiny seam, so this will save time stopping and ironing. and put this back on your design board. And when you put it on your design board, this black should be pointing up. Put right sides together. We're gonna pin and sew, and then we can press both of these seams at the same exact time. Now that point matches and that point matches. So now we can press. Set your seams on the top and the bottom. We're gonna press away from the center. And this lies nice and flat because it was pressed open. If it wasn't pressed open, if it was pressed to one side, it might be a little bumpy. And the bottom one will be the same way. You're gonna add a fabric E rectangle to the top. We're gonna press that at the sewing machine just to save time at the ironing table. Then we will add our fabric E's to the left and right of the pumpkin and at the bottom, there won't be any additional rectangles. Here you want these points to match and you can see there's a perfect point there and that's a little bit not perfect so I'm going to fudge that little intersection right there by sewing a little bit in. You can see through the fabric to see where that seam is. And now it matches. So I'm just going to finger press that press the two sides, and we can add those fabric E rectangles to the left and right. So I've pinned at the left and the right, and you can see the white looks a little bit wider than the block. So what you do is you pull it, lay it flat and pin right in the center and you ease this white fabric in. And just ease it in. this should be a nice intersection right here and right here and they match so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side 
pin the left, the right, and then ease in that top fabric. Now we can do it all over press. Just set your seam, press towards your background fabric. And we're gonna trim the block up when we're done. Just trim the little edges off. This one, since it has a lot more pieces than the bat block, a little bit more might trim off, we'll see. So now we're gonna just trim up our side. We're gonna trim on all four sides. And that is gonna require a tiny bit of this white to come off the bottom just to make it straight, and that's okay. And these should be pretty straight already. Now at the top, we want that to be nice and flat, and you can see that it's kind of popping up. I'm just gonna cut all that off. And you're gonna to continue to make four pumpkin blocks. We wanna make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Join us next week for block three. I don't know if you can guess what you think block three is gonna be, but you can comment below and let us know what you think. And don't forget to check out our beautiful cross stitch that is also free that goes along with this. Thanks again, see you next time.